hope everyone's well. Here we go. Um, Instagram live, Sunday. It's eight o'clock. Just seen the race. Hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I'm always intrigued to know whether it's everybody's cup of tea. Do you like a bit of eye racing and e-sport or are you a bit virtualed out? There's a lot of it, I know that much. It's been good fun, but there is a lot of it. Anyway, uh, because it's Sunday night, um, I thought we'd do another Instagram Live. Uh, Jamie Chadwick's joining us, which is excellent. Um, and uh, of course, I wanted to say cheers to everybody. Cheers, um, here's to uh, whatever the next few months are gonna bring us, I suppose, the next few weeks especially. It's a weird time, isn't it? But, fingers crossed, uh, we'll get through it together. So here we go, first drink of the evening. I can't say it's the first drink of the day. I had a delicious lunch, uh, cooked by the other half. Um, roast dinners are his absolute best. He does an amazing roast potato, and I'll get slammed for saying this, but his roast potatoes are better than my mum's. So there we go. She'd probably say that as well. Um, I have to introduce you to Bunny um, because my daughter, who's just gone to bed, said, please take Bunny. Um, so I've taken Bunny. There we go. So um, Bunny says hi. Um, I'm just waiting for you know people to get comfy. Um, let me know where you are, what you're doing. Um, <laughs> thank you, Richard, for saying hi, Bunny. Um, what you're drinking. Um, and... Uh, Thanks to Hesman, who says it's three o'clock where I am in Toronto, I started to drink. I love that. Why not? It's always drinkable time somewhere. Not that I'm, you know, totally saying just get drunk all the time, but it's nice every now and then. Have a little tipple. See, there we go. It's almost as if we're all together in one virtual pub. Um, so, uh, oh, hello to, uh, right, I've got to get this right, Repsol Kid 64 from Shrewsbury, very nice. Um, you and Bunny Rock, says Sean. Um, he's got lots of numbers. I never know what the numbers are all about, but anyway, lots of numbers. Um, if you want to ask questions, I don't know if you've done Instas before, you're probably more au fait with it than I am, but there's a button at the bottom, which is uh, a couple of question marks. If you press on that and type in your questions, uh, then I can utilise them in a much better way than if you just ask them on screen, but more than happy for you to ask them on screen. That's no problem. Uh, delighted to say that Jamie Chadwick is going to join us for a bit of a natter as well. Um, so that'll be cool. We can find out what she's been up to. Uh, she's done a lot of cycling. I know that. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. Um, so we'll catch up with her and find out how she's doing. Oh, Dr. Bob Eddin said, I just joined Insta this afternoon, especially for this. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I feel, I feel very honoured by that. Thank you very much. Um, right, so one question's coming already. Let me just press that. Um, right, so... Richard Sutton has asked a question. Hopefully you can see that. Do you think we'll get a season? Ooh, that is the question, isn't it? I've kind of I've kind of gone up and down with this one as to whether I think that's actually going to happen or not. Um, and the more I think about it, the more I can't quite understand how it's going to happen. I mean, I desperately want it to happen, of course. Everybody wants us to go back racing because that's what we do. It's our life, isn't it? Um, but are we actually going to get to go back racing is the biggest question. And I think I'm going to be looking out not just at what the Prime Minister updates us all with, um, but also, I suppose, towards the likes of NASCAR. I think NASCAR are going back um, next Saturday, Sunday. So that'll be fascinating. They're having skeleton crews, they're having um, social distancing measures, the garages are apparently going to be safe. So I think they're going to set a precedent and I think a lot of people will be watching that just to, you know, see how it goes. Um, so fingers crossed. Uh, John Veal says, are these all F1 passes behind you? Uh, they are my mini lanyards. Um, there's a couple that have snuck in there from the husband. But um, yeah, most of them are mine. Um, and you only get one each year you go to uh, Formula One if you're like season accredited. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different events there from British GP, Race of Champions, um, BBC stuff, Speedway, you name it. There's a lot there. Um, Allard, hello Allard. Um, you're asking what are the animals in the background? Um, they are rhinos. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the background, but they are, yeah, two very large rhinos. I don't even know why. <laughs> 
but there we go that's just the way it is um thank you to um tw solo traveler series it's good to hear your voice uh, and see you again jenny time to start racing soon hopefully well can but hope um right now magically i'm gonna have to try and find out if i can get jamie chadwick to come up on the line uh so i think i can if i do that then hopefully as if by magic Jamie will um, appear and we can ask her Hello. some questions. There she is! That was very smooth. This Hello. has crept up on me. <laughs> oh, I've got you now. Sorry. I want to know the news of that right now. <laughs> How are Sorry, you? you just paused on me. I'm good. I'm good. I've just watched Boris's um, little update, which hasn't really uh, updated me quite as much as I would have liked. <laughs> but um, yep. yeah, no, I'm good. I think you're in the same boat as everybody. And um, it looks behind like you have some nice slatted windows. Where are you? What are you doing this lockdown? Um, I'm in London. Um, so I have been in London uh, pretty much this whole time. So it's actually gone reasonably quickly so far. Um, I have been kind of hoping that well, it was going to come to a bit of a sooner end. Uh, definitely the first half of it flew by. The days were going so quick. And then the last few days or weeks is just getting a little bit longer. But yeah, no, I'm doing all right. Um, so you haven't done what loads of people have done and just kind of moved in with parents? No. <laughs> I, too much. I have seen my parents briefly. I did have to pop back and get some stuff. Um, but I think for our family rela relationship and dynamic, it was better my brother and I were kind of like out of the house and then sort of pop back and can see them in our sort of own comfort because I think all of us living together at once probably would have been World War Three. Too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, now, body-wise, have you recovered from last weekend? An epic cycle journey that you did <laughs> in your back. Was it in your front room that you did it? Yeah, I did it in my living room. So, um, I mean questionable choice of uh challenge to set myself <laughs> but um yeah no so I basically because of this quarantine it's the first time I started this whole indoor cycling malarkey and I cycled <laughs> quite a lot before that but never indoors and I kind of set myself this challenge before I'd properly done it um and then I realized that actually cycling indoors is really hard and <laughs> I end up just sweating my own body weight out <laughs> pretty much every time and yeah, I committed to doing 100 miles for charity. And fortunately, I got through it. Um, you did well. Actually, it wasn't too bad. Um, and yeah, we raised some good money for charity. So yeah, there's sort of a uh, positive side of it. <laughs> I've seen, I saw, you know, Instagram is an amazing thing. It gets you to see a little window into people's lives. And um, I've seen lots of people doing, obviously, sim racing now, indoor cycling, trying to keep fit as best they can, all sorts of weights and gym stuff. Um, a lot of people seem to have bought a fan and just placed a little fan by them. I don't know if that's to replicate the fans that would normally be in, you know, the grandstands or if it's just blooming hot. I'm guessing it's just blooming hot when you're doing any form of like indoor cycling or sim work. Yeah, definitely. It's a hot thing, especially in London. It's been so, the weather's been so good recently. Um, I mean, it's cooled down it. a bit today, but yeah, I mean, it's been such nice weather. So yeah, it's definitely been uh, to cool me down, sadly. Yeah, I wish I had a few fans, at least even if it was through the windows. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's nice to be able to actually have some time at home uh, in my own bed. Um, my sort of living room has turned into like a cycle studio, gym, kind of <laughs> hybrid area. <laughs> but no, it's, it's not too bad. How are you though? I've not spoken to you in a while. How are things? Yeah. Um, so the last time we saw each other, I'll just try and explain, is in um, Marrakesh. Of course, yeah. So we did Formula E together, which was great. We ate chips under a stage. We did. Um, I hope I was allowed to give that a little bit of information. That's fine. <laughs> I'll pretend I burnt it um, off in my cycle ride. <laughs> yeah, you've made up for it. Um, and uh, yeah, it seemed like that was about three years ago. It does, doesn't it? That's it really Not actually that long ago, though. No. Was it? It was Feb end of february yeah yeah, yeah. so um that's when we last saw each other and we haven't had a catch-up but yeah i'm good i was just saying um my daughter just gave me this before she went to bed and said you have to take your rabbit with you oh cute so, there we go i've got her rabbit star oh, of the show tonight Obviously, that's sweet is it just the three of you 
it's just the three of us um yes. and we're lucky we've got outdoor space so we can get out and um go and play in the garden and stuff but um yeah i think everybody was kind of ever hopeful that something would change and it seems like not a lot to really change for anybody yeah at least um, on the 1st of June, I think, um, yeah. it's going to be pretty much the same, which, I mean, it makes sense. I think we need probably to see more improvement before, you know, we can start going out and seeing people. But I think everyone obviously clearly did get their hopes up because um, I, well, I was on FaceTime with a load of friends watching it, um, all being like, maybe we can get to see each other this week. And oh. you'll, you'll appreciate this because you, you, we share a birthday. Um, we do. And so I was getting way too excited about, because uh, it's a week on Wednesday. We're in the 10-day ten... countdown zone for our birthday. Exactly. So I was getting way too excited, potentially thinking that I might be able to be with my friends for my birthday, but <laughs> sadly not. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll just be a massive FaceTime session, Zoom session, so. that sort of thing. Um, okay. You've been cooking quite a bit, haven't you? I've been trying to. I um, Yeah, I've kind of I've always enjoyed cooking um but I feel like it's a really shit rubbish excuse sorry but no it's fine we're not on the BBC we can okay, swear good. I'm not on the BBC. we are live and you can um swear. it's a really <laughs> shit excuse that I always say that I never had the time to cook but actually obviously now I do have the time um but I actually have to cook because there's no sort of anyone else cooking for me or ordering in so um yeah no I've got quite into it I mean it kind of is the cross between making sort of healthy stuff that's also tastes good that I'm sort of learning about but yeah I'm missing my Sunday pub lunch but other than uh, that it's all good. <laughs> um, so what's your go-to dish now do you have one is are you an expert at something? Ooh, um, I wouldn't give myself expert status on anything just yet um, <laughs> I am eating pretty late I'm trying to eat pretty well so it's not the most interesting uh, of cuisines but I tell you what I've got down that I mean it's a little bit of a weird thing that I really like it's like a fish taco oh nice. so it's like um fish with like a spicy salsa with like tomatoes coriander and then some like either guacamole and mayonnaise or sour cream or something in like a kind of soft tortilla type wrap and that's and like I'm hungry my... just you saying that it's that delicious I fish know, tacos it's not are bad, is it? I've impressed myself but that's like a kind of pretty healthy light meal um that I've kind of been having quite a lot and yeah I've been trying just not to make too much of the same thing that I enjoy so I get bored of it and then yeah so it. and um, someone not... who got in touch a minute ago just saying see you in Mexico City Jamie ah um, Diva Raza so clearly you've got a fan of Mexico City number one <laughs> but number two you can cook tacos for them when you go there oh god no Mexican food is one of my favorites and I've not actually been to Mexico so um oh you've things... never done mexico no no and God, it's amazing the other day everyone was sharing obviously all their mexican cuisines and stuff and i was just thinking that's that's where i want to be <laughs> yes i tell you what um hang on a minute this is going to be random because i'm going to at speed i'll find you a cookbook hang on a minute Stay there. Oh, no, uh, here it. right who knew this was going to turn into a cookbook recommendation this I'm going to screenshot this page right now. It's amazing. So it's Thomasina okay. Meyer. She won MasterChef. Yeah. And um, she does really nice recipes. So that is the book that you want. Amazing. Okay, I've screenshotted that. that you? I'll send you photos <laughs> of whatever I come up with. Because, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Mexican food. And hopefully we still end up going to Mexico at the end of the year. Oh, yes, because oh, obviously gosh. W Series was meant to be going to the back to back of America and Mexico as part of the support race paddock. It's the first time W Series and Formula One coming together. Have you, how communicative are they as a driver with telling you, you know, you're lined up with, oh, you've gone very dark, haven't yeah, you? I've been the car. I don't <laughs> the know why that's <laughs> I pressed the button and I don't know what I've done. Put 10p <laughs> more in the meter, you'll be fine. Yeah. You've got nice there you <laughs> I'm going to show you the roof of my flat. We <laughs> all the like ceiling. The roof. Um, yeah. yeah uh, so you're involved in a lot of series in one way or another. How are they all keeping you in touch with what their plans are? Like, are they on the phone to you or do you just get on with it and someone at some point will tell you when you're going to be back in a car? Um, I'm getting a fairly regular update. The sad thing is, is they're not the updates that I kind of want at the moment. Um, so we keep getting emails and W Series have been amazing, to be fair. Um, but we keep getting emails saying update confidential. And I'm like, right, here we go. This is 
the information and it's basically saying we can't really update you yet because <laughs> they don't really have the guidance or the clarification that they need. So there's been a lot of that. Um, like I said, they've been amazing at sort of informing us and keeping us updated. There's been no lack of communication, but I think from my side, especially, um, you know, I think well, as a driver, you just want to have a date set in stone, know exactly when that's going to be, even if it's the end of the year, you just want to know, and then you can sort of work towards that. But I think the difficulty we're all facing at the moment is no one's got that, um, got that in mind at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. everyone's saying pick somewhere where the light isn't behind you. There we go. That's much better. But oh, that's if you put your helmets I... on your bookcase. Yeah, I can show you if you want. Um, sure that's, that's cool. I'm finding this bizarre because I sat in the same spot. I'm going to fill my wine up as well because I've kind of Drank crept up on me and I managed to... Um, <laughs> yeah, that's my bookcase. Oh, look, that's And cool. then I've got the W Series trophy there. Oh. And then the bottle of champagne I got given. And then obviously my bike just takes up <laughs> most oh. of the space. In that's the black. Mega. So I like that. And I'm about to get really bright right now, I reckon. Okay, yeah. get really bright. I'm going to find some questions um, while you're doing that. Uh, so... <laughs> Tracy has been in touch and she says, is Jamie looking forward to the W Series eSport races coming soon? Yes, so they've announced that you're going to be doing a whole Series 10, isn't it, that you're going to be doing? Yeah, so I, well, yeah. What are you so, drinking, by the way? Uh, I drink red wine, so. That's okay. I've got a glass of Zinfandel, I think. Wow. As a random choice for today. I had, um, I don't normally have that much red meat in my diet anymore. Or as much as I used to. I used to have it a lot. Um, but I had red meat for dinner. And for me, there is nothing better than red wine and red meat. So I think there are plenty of people that would agree, including my husband. I don't eat <laughs> meat. So I... Oh, um, yeah, you don't. I remember that. I knew that. I don't get that. So that's why I go white wine. But um, cheers. Cheers to everybody cheers. at home. Cheers, everyone. Cheers to you stay, staying stay, alert. Stay safe. Stay safe, stay well is what the go-to. I need to drink now. That's yeah, it's really weird doing this. I, like last week, I did this without a guest, and I was just like, I can't oh, drink. You? This is terrible. Oh. <laughs> it's like all the Zoom kind of like pub quizzes and everything. It's a really weird sort of feeling afterwards. You just shut your laptop and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, it is surreal. Very um, I didn't answer that question at all. Um, in terms go of the it. esports races, yeah, no, I am really looking forward to it. I mean, it's kind of soothing. Uh, slight of the well, a little bit of the need to go racing uh it's not sort of sort of scratching the full itch i guess because that's the term to use yeah. but i mean it's great they've um provided us with everything um all the kit that we need i've got all the setup so far that i need and um yeah i think the circuits that they've picked especially look really really good fun so yeah i'm looking forward to it um i think they will do it really well and like I said, it's kind of a little bit of something to look forward to over the next few months, even though we can't be out racing at the real tracks. Um, when it comes to it, how, how much sim racing have you done in the past? So obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you've been in the sim at Williams. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of my role at Williams is sim based. Um, this sim stuff is quite different. Um, there is an element of learning to drive the computer or drive the game. Um, and that does vary game to game. Um, but I mean, the concept is the same. The basics are the very, well, very similar. Um, so far, I've done a couple of the F1 races with Veloce um, that I did at their offices. So in isolation at their offices. So um, mm -hmm. those were really good fun to get involved with. Um, I'd like to do more, especially now W Series has sent me the setup. Um, I'm looking forward to getting practicing, getting out there and doing a bit more because it seems to be what all the drivers are up to at the moment. And um, yeah, it's quite fun to watch as well. Uh, yeah, because so this is a weird thing. We were having a debate the other day about why there aren't more females doing sim racing. And obviously, you know, there have been quite a lot of comments this week from certain people about, you know, the esports and W series without going into too much detail because I don't want to start another slanging match. Um, why aren't there more girls doing sim racing? Yeah, I've always had a bit of a thing with that. And I know I'm not leading the best example because I've not done that much myself um, over the past few months. And a lot of that has been to do with just not having a setup or anything like that. And so that isn't out of um, choice that I've not done that much. Um, I'd love to be leading an example and doing a lot more because for a long time now, and I was involved with a few esports events last year, I felt really strongly that there is absolutely no reason why women shouldn't be involved in esports because 
there is no physical barrier there's no reason and it is just purely in my opinion a stereotype because in all kind of walks of gaming I guess um you don't see that many women playing I guess uh like like what's it called call of duty uh yeah. Fortnite, stuff like that but <laughs> it's just a stereotype that's good knowledge uh it's just a stereotype <laughs> thing um and so I was really felt strongly about breaking down those stereotypes and actually using it as a way to get more girls involved in motorsport in general using esports so I've always felt strongly about it um I don't know the answer as to why there aren't many uh women involved and I think the W series uh esports series in my opinion is them sort of recreating the series in esports form so it's not trying to it will obviously generate a bit more interest in women in esports but it's not trying to basically tackle that issue entirely it's like indycar have their own series formula e have their own series dtm is kind of covering that aspect um so yeah. a lot of the comments i've seen don't quite get that bit so that kind of explains that and yeah i mean if it does encourage more girls to get involved in esports then that's great but i think as drivers and as people that are doing it we can definitely do a lot better um by actually doing more uh, races actively um Another question. I don't know if you can see this on your screen. I can. Hopefully you can. Um, are you going to Twitch? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Yay. I think that's the plan for um, all of us. I think they're setting us all up. They've sent, well, they've sent us all the webcams and everything to get it all set up. So, um, yeah, it's quite funny because I did the Veloce Esports one, um, the Versus race, and I didn't have a Twitch stream or anything, but I could see other people's Twitches. <laughs> and it's quite funny because they're all having this conversation and chat like kind of we are having now. And I was just sort of out of the loop. I could hear them talking. And um, yeah, it's a really, really good way of interacting um, and getting across a different side, I guess, of a driver because you guys can't see what we're doing in a helmet or behind the helmet when we're out on track. But on esports, you can. So yeah, it's a really cool way of doing it. And obviously from the W Series side, we'd love to do that as well. Um, I went a bit premature, sorry. No, right. I'm <laughs> just on a read of it. Um, Favourite F1 track? Oh, good question. Um, I mean, track that I've driven, um, F1 track that I've driven, I, I love Silverstone. I think that's a really epic track. But I think track that I've not driven yet that I think is awesome, um, I would say Budapest looks really good. Yes. Um, also, Cota, Circuit of Americas, which I will get to go to potentially this year. Um, and let me throw another random one in there. Um, what else is on the calendar? I tell you, I've not done this either, but Zambor, if that went ahead oh. this year, that would have been epic. Banking? Are you all yes. about the banking? Oof. Looks, yeah, I think that will be a driver's circuit. So I think the car will be less um, of a factor around there. That's where you will see the drivers make the difference. And the bigger difference between teammates, I think, would happen around Zambor really? as well. I love that. Um, I've done Zambor a few times with GTs. Oh, of course, and so yeah. actually, I can't remember who it was, which is annoying, but someone drove me around and I'm one of the worst passengers. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'd much rather drive not than a passenger. Yeah, not good. No. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, my husband was working with um, Lando and Carlos for McLaren doing a shoot for Sky. And he said, neither of those guys like to be a passenger either. Yeah. yeah both like fighting out to see who can drive neither of them wants to sit in the passenger seat at all that's just a driver control thing yeah. i think it's a driver thing and it's a control thing and all of us i've just seen someone said no suzuka and actually suzuka takes the biscuit as well i completely forgot <laughs> about suzuka so um yeah there are some really epic tracks obviously i mean there's 21 that f1 go to but some awesome awesome circuits on there um right i'm gonna try and find a, a couple more questions um some of them are for me i don't know whether to oh, answer, answer no answer your questions i can ask okay. you them wait how do i see <laughs> <Go them? on. laughs> okay are you happy to go to other countries if f1 does restart beautiful um i suppose we can both answer that in fairness because we're both part of the f1 thing kind of um so um am i happy to go i i don't think it's going to be my option let's put it that way I think other people will take that option for me, whether that's the BBC, whether that's IMG who produced the BBC's output for Radio 5, or whether that's F1 and the FIA. Um, bearing in mind, I've been reading quite a lot recently, the FIA are going to be responsible for the health and safety of all of us at the end of the day. Yeah. So the fewer people that go, the, f the less risk there is. I think everybody's going to be um, tested 
on a very regular basis and they're going to try and make this bias there. Um, I mean, I don't think we're going to be going to a race for quite some time. I reckon the first one we'd go to would be like Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, back to back at the end of the year. That would be cool. That would be very cool. I think, um, I don't know about other countries. Um, for me, it doesn't really, I, I've not, I'm not in your position. It doesn't matter necessarily where we go as long as they go somewhere for F1. Um, I was talking to someone about it the other day because I think the intensity that they're looking at, and this is purely me speculating and talking as maybe more of a fan than someone um, that's actually uh, well involved in it. Um, I think well, the intensity that they're looking at with the back-to-back -back weekends, three weekends on a trot, for me just seems ridiculous. Unless they did some sort of kind of shortened weekend, which I think would be really cool. I need to suggest this to Chase. I think they should do Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Maybe one practice, one qualifying race. So take out quite a lot of the sort of build up. Yeah. It'll make it more difficult in a sense, but also shorter. The race should only be maybe an hour, an hour and a half, not two hours. And then they can maybe justify doing back to back. That's me talking purely from no knowledge or expertise at all. But I think that could be a better solution than trying to just cram so much into a short space of time. Yeah, it will be interesting to see what they do. I mean, they can play around with it a lot, can't they? And really mix things up potentially this year. That I think the sticking point will be they've got to get 16, I think it's 16 races away contractually for the TV yeah. companies to pay all their rights fees. And that's a huge percentage of how F1 makes its money. So that's yeah. like, for them, that's the carrot that they've got to chase. They've got to get those races away. But it doesn't say that they have to do them in the standard way. So yeah, cut out practice sessions. Just let the drivers go for it. <laughs> I agree. And also, I think they've got to take into account the teams as well. Um, obviously, I think F1 could sort of ride this wave and survive it. But I don't think the teams can. So I think the teams especially and more sort of tail end of the grid, so sort of the bottom four or five teams really do need the opportunity to go out racing to get the prize money and get the commercial back in that they need to sort of survive really yeah it's, it's really a tough time um right let me see if i can get some more questions oh how is um you can see the i keep saying it because i keep thinking this is radio it's instant <laughs> you can see the question how is that <laughs> um awesome absolutely awesome um yeah i mean i went out to new zealand just before sort of the whole crisis really hit um it's a similar timing to when the Oz GP was on and yeah it was an opportunity that I couldn't really turn down to go out to New Zealand and um drive the Roden cars um so David Dicker who's behind um Roden uh, has an amazing setup out there um and he basically got me out to do a bit of development work and yeah I loved every minute of it obviously being able to go out and drive cool cars uh is very much a perk of the job but also to go to New Zealand for the first time um absolutely loved out there so yeah definitely not going to be the last time um I get head out there and yeah hopefully I can explore more of the country next time I go as well amazing I've never been actually I'd love oh, to go next time well were you in Australia yes for the next time 30 hours I was going to say probably for a very short period of time next time you go to Australia make sure you tie in like a week just to head over because yeah, it's such a beautiful place. Yeah, I can't, well, I'd love to do that. Someday, someday when I haven't got a three-year-old that I'd have to take on a plane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a small life. Yeah. Uh, right, next question. Um, do you think there'll be rusty drivers causing accidents uh, when you race? So I spoke to, uh, this is such a name-dropping thing to say, I spoke to Daniel Ricciardo this week. Um, <laughs> oh, good. He reckons it'll be absolute chaos. Uh, for the first race because drivers will be rusty jump in the car your adrenaline goes really high you're quite excited and for especially for some of the younger drivers he just reckons it'll be shantastic um do you think it will be the same when you get in a car do you feel like the adrenaline could win <laughs> i think it'll go one way or the other um either <laughs> yeah no honestly i don't think there'll be sort of an in-between i think it'll be either every driver's pretty rusty and there'll be quite a few incidences or the other end of the scale. And actually, I think there'll be bigger gaps. Um, I think, you know, how we're used to seeing, okay, so Lewis normally edges out Valtteri, but it's by a really small margin. I think we're likely to see bigger gaps between teammates, bigger gaps between teams. Um, and then there's probably less likely to be any incidences and it will be 
a little bit more dominant by certain characters. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's going to be like. It'll be interesting because I think we've all become so accustomed to constantly being in the race car, constantly having the opportunity to be out in the car um, as much as possible and not really having any of these off seasons anymore. So now for this to kind of be like an off season and not a single person that well, I can imagine having the chance to be in a car to suddenly, if F1 does get going, to being thrown into a very intense race weekend, it's going to be yeah, pretty chaotic, I can imagine. Yeah, because Lewis Hamilton's come out, hasn't he, in his Mercedes video and said, oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be sim racing. Um, Valtteri Bottas, he's got a sim in his house, but he's not going to be, for the looks of it, he's not going to be racing with the other guys. There's definitely two camps, aren't they? The, the <laughs> I want a sim race, I just want to race. And uh, yeah, sim racing is like, not for me, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, there are. And to be honest, I get both sides of it. Um, I'm that person. I very much sit on the middle of it. Um, to be honest, this is bad. I'd rather go out on my bike than the <laughs> sim racing gives me the excitement of a competitive edge. Um, I love that. I love the racing side of sim racing. The actual just driving my simulator on a day to day basis. I don't get nearly the same feeling as I get outside or in the real world. Um, like I said, I'd rather go for a run or go on my bike. Um, but at the same time, um, I think, like you said, there's two sides of it. There's that competitive side that gives you that feeling and that buzz that I think a lot of the drivers are doing it for. But also, I think it's got to be noted that a lot of the drivers already were into sim racing. So Lando and Max especially, um, they did a huge amount. So actually, this has come about and it's brought a spotlight onto sim racing and it's kind of their time to shine, really. But for those that didn't sim race originally, and it's where uh, Leclerc and, say, George has have done so well is they've kind of jumped into their environment and to actually do as well as they've done is quite hard so um you're starting on a bit of a back foot if you've not um done it so much before yeah it does seem like those guys are totally at home I mean Lando's just well when he can get his work <laughs> he's um he's doing exceptionally well right another question um uh, Jamie I'm assuming that you're okay to stay with us for a little while yeah I've I've not come got on like five on, ten sadly. minutes <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not doing anything. Sadly, no, let's go. <laughs> um, right, let me know um, if you're watching. Uh, hi, I'm Jenny Gow. She's Jamie Chadwick, or she's J I don't know which way round it is. But um, uh, we're just having a natter. Hopefully, you're enjoying it um, wherever you are. Um, let me know where you are. And uh, this is a question you can play along with at home. Um, who is the F1 goat, uh, greatest of all time, Jamie? In your humble opinion. Um. To, for me, that is quite an easy Lewis. Um, I, I was trying to think if there's a better answer for it. Uh, someone a bit quirky, a bit different, but no, I feel it's Lewis for me. Um, I think what he's achieved in modern day racing, especially, I know obviously uh, Mercedes have had the advantage for this long, but especially time and time again, up against strong, strong teammates. I think that's where he has been, yeah, the greatest of all time in my opinion. Very good. That was relatively easy to say. And in my bookcase, we've got loads of books about like the greatest. Um, and it's it's so hard to call. I think Lewis, I was going to say, who would you say? Lewis in reflection, I think, in a million years' time, will will definitely be there. Yeah. Um, so many people cut off in their prime. That's that's the problem, isn't it? You can't do a true comparison. Um, even someone like Alonso. If Alonso had been in the better car and yeah. not made some absolute horror decisions in his career and gone the wrong way at the wrong time, he could have been the greatest of all time. So it's yeah, it's a tough one. It's all, you know. It's, it's relative. Difficult. I completely yeah. agree. <laughs> um, right. Another one for you. Do you have a football club that you support? So, I don't know why, but I um, did an Instagram live the other day and football came up in it more than probably motorsport. Oh. So I think people are clearly missing football a lot um, with the <laughs> current situation. Um, I used to follow football a lot and I used to play a little bit, but I, I don't really follow it that much anymore. Um, I've always been a Chelsea fan. Um, apparently that makes me a glorious supporter and everyone gives the exact place you just gave me, people <laughs> give me unless they support Chelsea. Um, but I don't really watch it that much anymore. I, I love sport. Um, I can watch sport till the cows come home, but football isn't the number one for me. Okay. Um, right. 
another one. We're, we'll wrap up soon, shortly, I'm, I promise you. Um, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, what's your best experience uh, with W Series? Um, okay, to not say winning, um, because that's kind of the cliche <laughs> or the typical answer. Um, <laughs> I would say, okay, this is going to be a bit of a long-winded answer, but um, that the whole, <laughs> it's a bit of a round the houses one as well, uh, the whole experience, to be honest. Um, I think through the whole emotional process of joining the W Series, knowing it had its critics, knowing it had people sort of, the feedback being mixed and knowing it wasn't going to be everyone's cup of tea to getting involved with it, meeting the whole team, meeting all the other girls as well. Um, I think it was really cool how well everyone got on throughout the whole process to then winning the first race, getting the development drive with Williams and everything kind of just tying in and the whole sort of trajectory being so steep and so much progress we made throughout the year. Um, for me, that's what made it what it was. Um, obviously, the winning was the icing on the cake. And I think, yeah, all in all, by the end of the year, I said it the other day, that's by far the most enjoyable year I've ever had racing. And mm. I go racing because I love racing and uh, the whole experience of it. And yeah, it really reminded me of that, which was nice. Are we are we gonna get to see you in an F one car? Do you reckon at some point in time? That's what is what everyone wants to happen. It's like <laughs> the dream at the moment, but it must that must also be pressure on you, or is it not? Um, it's pressure for sure, but more like it's an it's an inevitable career trajectory for me. Um, I'd be daft if I felt like you know I didn't want to drive an F one car in my lifetime, or if I wasn't trying to make it to F one because what I'm doing now would be pointless otherwise. Um. I think the bit I'm under no illusions about is how different my career pathway is. Um, you know, I do, <laughs> don't respond to anything on Twitter, but I do read a lot on Twitter. Um, and I do see the comments and I do see people sort of questioning why I'm doing it again, but there is a lot of structure to what I'm doing. I'm not trying to cheat the system in any way, but I'm trying to do it in the best way as possible to get me there on merit, uh, first and foremost, but there um, also in the best shape possible. And yeah, I think, Driving an F1 car is the next step, um, maybe in a free practice or something. This year, I got my first 10 super license points. Um, I need 25 uh, to race, oh, not to race, to do an FB1. Um, so W Series in an ideal world would have given me that if I were to win it again. Um, and that's potentially an FB1. And then, yeah, to race, there's still quite a lot that I need to take off. But um, don't worry, that's very much part of the trajectory and something I'm aiming for. I think everybody's just cheering you on. I know, you know, <laughs> it's a harsh world with you being so accessible to, to fans and people who might not be fans um, online. But, the, I mean, the world is just desperate to have a female representing them at, you know, the highest level possible. And W Series, for all the critics it had at the beginning, and we've spoken about this many a time, um, you know, it's giving you guys all a platform. You look at someone like Alice Powell, it's given her the ability to get back into a car after years of not being able to afford to. And, you know, someone like Abby Eaton, you know, what can she do in that car? She hasn't been back in a single seater for a long time. Um, it's just a frustration, isn't it, that coronavirus has stepped in and, you know, where you thought those points were going to be there potentially. Now you're just having to wait and wait and wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that side of it's the same for everyone. So I can't really complain too much about that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we all want the same thing. We all want a female to be representing well, us at the top of the sport um, on merit. Um, there's no one that's arguing that. I think I wouldn't say that there's any, um, you know, issues with a female getting to the top anymore. I think everyone wants it. Um, and everyone's trying to do it in different ways. You know, the way I've tried to do it or I'm trying to do it is different to the way that, you know, every other driver's trying to do it. And I don't think that matters at all. I don't have any issue with how any driver wants to do it, but I would love to see a female in F1 on merit. And I, honestly, it doesn't have to be me. Um, I want it to be me, but it doesn't have to be me. It just needs to be someone. And I feel strongly that there are talented enough women out there um, actually racing actively at the high enough ranks um, to make it happen. So yeah, fingers crossed that's something we can see. Fingers crossed. Um, Gordon says, have you ever ridden a motorbike? <laughs> Good question. Um, not a road motorbike. I used to ride um, motocross a little bit. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, when I was younger. I don't That's really so cool. know why my parents were so chilled with my brother and I, but um, <laughs> yeah, we used to, and honestly, I was a lot more fearless than I am now. I jumped on one not long ago. 
and I was like Miss Daisy when when I was younger I was throwing it over jumps and tabletops and stuff without any issues so yeah when I was younger I did um well motocross uh, but nothing uh, road bikes my dad has always said um you're not allowed to buy a road bike um, oh. <laughs> um motorbike uh, I've got a road cycle bike but he doesn't yeah. think I go fast enough on that which I still try and push the limits <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i so i did my license um loved it i remember the first time i opened a bike up out on the country roads i mean when i say open the bike i got to 50 miles an hour <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't exactly steaming um i was safe what can i say it was like nothing else i've ever experienced really yes so liberating yeah um oh, would I, like that. I mean would i he'd never let me do it now He'd be like, no. Oh no, you have to. You could have fake like a midlife crisis or something. Pretend like you need to for some reason <laughs> and make it happen. My um, brother uh, owns an electric scooter company, and he got this ridiculously fast scooter, off-road scooter that you use uh, on land. That um, I had to go on not long ago, and honestly, that's the most that same adrenaline feeling you get in the car. I got that feeling, and it was yeah, absolutely crazy. Oh, that's amazing. So, um, oh, he's going to be, oh, are you all right? Is yeah, no, good. Door? I think something in my kitchen is just, I don't know. We'll work that out. It'll be fine. Okay. I'm going to let you go in a minute. That's but right. On um, e-scooters. Yes. So it looks like they're going to pass like a new law to make them legal. I don't know where to go with that. But that would be presumably quite good for your brother. He'd be loving that. Yeah, well, I mean, he's been doing all right recently, to be fair. Um, the family group chat gets regular updates with um how well he seems to be doing at the moment but honestly i really hope they do get made legalized and that's not a biased opinion i am um, before i realized they weren't legal um i was using mine always around london um yeah so i is i can't remember the last time i took the tube i was just riding my scooter everywhere and it was perfect it felt safe meant that i didn't have to take public transport and then relatively inexpensive for what for what it was so um yeah fingers crossed that does change because um yeah it'd be a much better way to get around town um, right, I'm going to do one last question oh, no before worries. I let you go. But I thought this would be a good one. Advice for starting racing. Um, I'm really bad at advice, but I would say, <laughs> um, I would say in terms of starting, um, just keep at it. I think from my side, I started very much as a hobby. I did it because I enjoyed it. Um, and it just escalated year on year to something um, greater than what I can ever believe it's become now so I think always enjoy it do it for the right reasons um you know keep focusing on obviously working hard putting the effort in but I think above and beyond everything make sure you go racing and you love every minute of it because it is high pressure it is stressful and if you lose touch with that then um and you let that all take over then honestly it become become something that you don't enjoy doing and then the bad days are just never worth it. So yeah, it's not very good advice, but I would say just keep enjoying it, keep working hard. It's not an easy sport. We both know that. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, the well, we said earlier, you know, we're desperate for a female to succeed, and who knows, it could be you. <laughs> do you do you have to be loaded? Do you have to have loads of cash behind you nowadays? Do you think? Oh God, um, uh, no, I don't think you do. I think you have to get off the ground. Um, I think you have to be in a position where you've got to get above karting level, um, so maybe to an F4 level. Um, however you do that, you know, you don't have to be loaded. You can do that with, you know, financial support from sponsors, or whatever, but you've got to get to that level before you can justify, you know, getting in a position where you're in front of F1 teams and you're in front of the right people to then get the further support. Um, you know, from my side, I was always lucky. I had some little leg ups along the way, but it did very much become a case where, if W Series, for example, hadn't come around, I definitely didn't have the backing to go to the next level in single seaters. And yeah, there's, I think, a lot of right timing, uh, right place at the right time, so to speak. But yeah, I definitely think if you can get yourself to a level, uh, however you do it, um, sponsors, um, you know, support through parents, parents, friends, whatever it is, then um, you put yourself in a good position. Good stuff. Right, I'm going to let you go because I've taken up so much of your time when I said, yeah, just call for five minutes. No, no, that's all right. I said anything. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> and it's nice well, to have a catch up. <laughs> there is that. Um, uh, I have no idea how you end this bit because I haven't done this before. Right, but I'm I guessing... can just leave it if you want. Yeah, And that's then fine. save this awkward goodbye. <laughs>
Right. <laughs> nice to see you. See you later. Bye, baby. Bye. Take care. Happy birthday soon. <laughs> there we go. So she's gone. Um, isn't she awesome? We're so lucky to have someone like her representing um, this country, but females in this country as well. She's just fab. Um, thank her. Uh, thank for her time really uh, and thank you guys for your time as well it's been really nice just chatting and catching up um i kind of said i'd, I'd see how this goes and and take it from there so hopefully you've enjoyed it um and let's see if um if we can do another one at some point in time i'll see who else will join me out of um the f1 and other people that i know um but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry if I haven't answered your question. Um, I will um, endeavour to do that on Twitter if you want. Uh, I can spend a little bit of time doing that at some point. Um, but uh, for now, I will say thank you. Stay safe. Um, look after yourselves. Oh, Tabitha, I'm so sorry. Um, if you haven't checked out Tabitha's uh, TikTok account, go and have a look because it's amazing. She's done some brilliant stuff on it. The cartoon ones are my favorite um, and uh, they're just, they're totally awesome. So have a look um, uh, on Insta and on Twitter and um, follow her because uh, they've been brilliant. Um, I've done that now. Hopefully you're okay, Tabitha. Love you, love to everybody at home and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care and bye for now.